This lesson describes the use of the bone and bind tools and demonstrates a few common scenarios for use of armatures in Flash Professional CS6. So I have a blank project here, and what we're going to do is demonstrate the use of these tools. So let's go and create, firstly, a basic rectangle. And we'll just drag this out. So if I select this item, we can see it's a basic shape. And the bones tool, which is right down here, let's select the bone tool right now. This can be used on either basic shapes such as this, or upon a series of movie clip symbol instances. And we'll demonstrate both here. So to use the bone tool on a shape, all you have to do is click and drag to create a little bone in there. Then you can grab the joint, click and drag again, and so forth until you've completed the sort of skeleton that you want. Now that we've actually created these, we can see that while the shape was on layer 1 previously, it's now created an armature layer for us. And an armature layer, you can see, it looks like a little man running, and that shows us that this is an actual armature that's been created. Using the select tool, we can hover over any of these specific bones, and you'll notice that when I hover over any of these bones, the cursor has a little bone next to it. And when I select any of those, we can see properties for that specific IK bone. IK being inverse kinematics. There are a number of different things that we can specify here. We have, of course, the location of the bone and so forth. And these specific elements are just more informational than anything else. We have specifics around the rotation and translation of joints. So, for instance, we can constrain the rotation around a joint using min and max if we want to. And that goes for both joint rotation and joint translation along either X or Y. Something that's more new is this spring property. So we're able to give it a certain bit of strength and damping. And this will allow us to make our actual movement seem more natural when we're actually animating this thing. So to actually move these, all you have to do is click on them and then drag them around. And you can see as we do this how sort of natural it looks. So it behaves just as if we were dealing with joints and bones here. So you can make adjustments on these all over the place. You can also pin specific pieces. So you see here how I've pinned that. So now when I move these things, the entire bit doesn't move because we've got this one joint that's just pinned right there. And I can unpin that if I want to, in which case it's now able to move once again. So pretty flexible. Now let's have a look at the bind tool. So the bind tool is a mechanism for binding particular bones to the shapes around them. So again, this is a shape that we have these bones in. So if I go over here and select my bind tool, I'll be able to select different bones and see their actual bindings. So if I select this bone right here, we can see that the bone is represented by this red line. And the points along the shape that are bound to this bone are showing up here as yellow. If I want to, I can actually drag out and create additional bindings. So if I bind to that specific one there, and this one I'll bind here, so forth and so on. So we can see that things have changed. And if I choose my selection tool, this is going to adjust actually what is happening here. So we can see we've got some distortion in this case. But um, it allows us to do 
a number of constraints upon how the shape adheres to the bones themselves. For an example of animation done with the bone and bind tools, we can see this little stick figure here. This is a stick figure in Verse Kinematics Armature. And if I go in and control test movie, we can see that there is definitely some natural movement going on here through use of inverse kinematics. So looking at this, we can see that this is actually created through a series of movie clip symbols. So we have one for the head, one for the torso, and then three segments for each arm and so forth. And then all of these are simply animated along the timeline in this armature layer. You might also notice here that things look a bit different from when they did in the little example that we did just a moment ago. So we have here the actual bones, but they're actually showing up as sort of wireframe. And the reason for that is because when we have the actual armature layer selected, we can go in and change some options in terms of the armature itself. So we can see that this wire style here, we can change that to solid, and that shows us the bones. We can also change it to line, which will simply show up as lines, or none, which of course doesn't show them at all. So you'll notice here too that we also have constraints on any of these joints. So if I go in with the bone tool itself, we can see that rotation is enabled here, but X and Y translation are not. Let's go over here and see this. So here we can see on this particular arm that joint rotation is enabled, but it's also constrained to a certain minimum and maximum. If we want to jump around different bones, it's really easy to do this through these controls up here. We can simply go from one bone to the next using these controls and edit them as we see fit. So this has been an example of how to use both the bone and bind tools within Flash Professional CS6.